Oh, this is Halo 5 Tutor with another Halo 5 multiplayer gameplay commentary. As always, I'm bringing you the tips and tricks that you need to take your game to the next level. I'll help you win more often and have more fun while you're doing it. For those of you who are new to my channel, welcome. I'm happy to have you. I'm happy to be here. For those of you who are old fans and friends, welcome back. I'm glad to be here. It's good to see you again. Uh, Halo 5 is here and I'm ready to rock and roll. Uh, for those of you who don't know me, I've been making Halo videos all the way back since Halo 3 when I started playing. So I made Halo 3 videos, ODST, Reach, 4, and now 5. So I've been playing for a long time. I'm not a pro player. I'm a casual player. But I try to play smart. I try to use tactics and strategies that anyone can use regardless of your skill level. And those are the, the types of tips and tricks that I bring to the table to help everyday players win more often and have more fun. So you'll see I'm able to pick up the sniper rifle right off the bat. I get a nice snapshot kill and then a cross map kill with some team shooting for a double right off the bat. Now, that's one of the most important things that I'm going to start with. And, and again, I'm going to stick to basic tips here. I'm not going to get too advanced because a lot of you are new or just trying to get a refresher. But one of the first things you want to do when you start in any game is you want to go for those power weapons. Because the team that controls the power weapons throughout the game is going to have a massive advantage. So when the game starts, you want to rush for those power weapons right away, generally with your team. Now, if you lose the power weapons at some point, like I did, I lost the sniper right here, you want to go back, you want to avenge your death, you want to work with your teammates and reclaim those power weapons. That's so important. Now that I have the sniper, I'm looking for a good spot on the map to use it. So I found, I'm not familiar with this map, so I just tried to find an area with some nice open lines of sight where I was up as high as I thought I could get. And so this was the position that I chose. And that's something that you want to keep in mind with every game. It's important to control the weapons, and it's also important to physically control the map. So generally speaking, it's better to control elevated locations. So you want to be up higher on the map, if at all possible. There's a lot of reasons for that. Number one is, if you're up higher than your opponents, they're shooting at your feet and you're shooting at their head. So you can get much more effective shots in uh, at that angle if you're up higher. Another thing is, it's much more difficult to get ambushed if you're up above your opponents. They usually have to climb up or fly up or whatever they gotta do. It's much more difficult for them to ambush you. Whereas if you're up above them, you can just drop down easily and ambush your opponents. So that's another important thing. Um, also, when it comes to map control, every map is different. So you want to kind of get a feel for each map, and that, that comes with time. You know, eventually you get a feel for what are the different areas of the map, where are the weapons located, what are the escape routes, what are the quickest ways to cross the map and help a teammate. And so I would recommend, you know, once you get in there, of course, once you first hit the game, you want to play, you just want to get in, get some games in and have some fun, which is fantastic. That's exactly what I did. However, when you get a chance, go in by yourself uh, and explore the maps. Try to figure out what the different maps, uh, how the maps are laid out, where the weapons are located, where, you know, how you can get across the map to help out a friend, whatever the case is. Because eventually you want to get to the point where you realize, hey, I can strafe to the left here, I can jump backwards, I can strafe to the right. If I move off this ledge, I'm not going to fall off the map, right? So you, you want to become very familiar with the map so that you can move around naturally uh, without even really looking where you're going. Eventually, that's where you want to get to. Um, what are some of the other tips? Okay, teamwork. That's so critical in Halo. Teamwork has always been... This is not... This is not like a, a run and gun game where you just run out there and take on the entire team all by yourself. Now, I've noticed in this game especially, much more so than in previous Halo games, you can die very, very fast. Your shields and your health can become depleted very quickly, and you know you can you can get killed before you even turn around and figure out who's shooting you. So it's very important to travel with your teammates. Now, certainly it's ideal if you have friends, you're communicating through the headset, you're talking about what's going on in the game, but even if you aren't doing that, you still want to stick close to your teammates. So you'll see their tags spread out throughout the map. 
you want to head for those tags, you want to try to back them up, you want to try to move uh, as a pack of least moving pairs, and the last thing you want to do is jump in a giant hole in the middle of the map. I do that at least two or three times here. <laughs> You'll, you'll see I'm completely unfamiliar with this map, and I jump right into this giant cavernous pit a couple times, totally on accident, not realizing what I'm doing. So again, that's just me being brand new and not knowing what the heck I'm doing. <laughs> so there I go again. But uh, again, you want to... So let's see what I've reviewed here. You want to control the power weapons, you want to control the map, you want to be familiar with the map, you want to try to work together with your teammates. So again, keep an eye on the tags. If the tags turn yellow, then your teammates are shooting. If your their tags turn orange, then your teammates are being shot at. Uh, so you can kind of get a feel for what's going on in the map just by watching your teammates tag. Obviously, if you see the big red X, you know a teammate has been killed in that area, which may mean they got ambushed and they were outnumbered, or it may mean they were able to get a bunch of shots on an opponent before they went down. So if you have a chance from across the map, if you see that red X go down, it's always a good idea to try to get in just a couple shots on your opponents. Because a lot of times if your teammate went down, he's able to put a few shots on the opponents before he went down and you can clean up the kill. Um, another thing, when your shields go down like that, just try to fall back briefly. Uh, don't, don't go out there in the heat of battle when your shields go down. Uh, you can see I'm just using grenades very, very liberally. As I recall in Halo, Halo 4, you weren't able to pick up grenades off the ground unless you had a special ability. But here you can pick up grenades and they're everywhere. Every time people die, they leave grenades. So you want to be very, very liberal with those grenades. Even if you don't see uh, the opponent that you're throwing them at, just, just throw them out there. You, in this game alone, I got a couple cross-map grenade kills that... Uh, you know, you could call them luck, but they weren't luck because I was strategically throwing grenades and being very liberal with those. So that's something you want to keep in mind. Uh, let's see what else uh, do I want to go over here. We've got teamwork, we've got controlling the map, we've got controlling uh, the weapons. Uh, I, I will be going into a lot more detail with a lot more information in my future videos. Another thing I'll point out is uh, right as you start up the game you may want to go into the settings you can change things like your gamer tag that tag that's up above your head change it to something that people can communicate easily in the game another thing there's a lot of layouts for the controller so find a layout that works for you i like the recon layout uh, because it's most similar to what i learned b way back in halo 3 so i've been using recon ever since i like the recon layout but you may like something else so go back and find a button layout that works for you. Um, here I'll point out that the crouching behavior still works. If you crouch, you fall off the radar, which uh, allows you to ambush your opponents. A lot, that drives a lot of people crazy. They call it camping, you know, but it can be very strategic, especially in this game where you can die very, very quickly. It's very easy to ambush your opponents or to be ambushed. So keep in mind that if you're crouching, you're going to stay off the radar, and of course, uh, it's the other way for your opponents as well, so watch out for that. Here I get sandwiched, uh, get shot from both sides, nothing I can do about that. Again, that's why it's so important to travel with a team rather than flying solo. Uh, you're not going to get stuck in the trap like I did there. But we're able to pull out a win. I think uh, I had a pretty good ratio here. Let's see if it comes up. Uh, 14 kills, 7 deaths, so pretty good. Happy about that. Just again, happy to be back. I hope the tips and tricks were helpful. They're very basic, I know, but this is just the first video. I'm going to have many more to come. Thanks for watching, everybody. This is Halo 5 Tutor signing out. I'll see you next time. Please make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. I'll see you later.